Hey everybody, it's Kath with Backyard Columbus, and today's episode is about the ruby throat hummingbird. So that is the only hummingbird that we have here in central Ohio, sadly. I'm pretty sure it's the only one in the state of Ohio, but let's stick with Columbus, and that's all we got is the ruby throat. So if you would like to attract these little things to your yard, here are a few things I'd like to share with you to think about. So if you're a person, say you're busy, you don't have space, you don't have time, and but you would like to see them, you can do just a hummingbird feeder, okay? But there are some very important things I'd like to share with you about that. So you go to the store and you see all these different hummingbird feeders. Nobody cares about the kind of feeder. I've never seen one thing about good, bad, or whatever. Um, If you can get one to eat off your finger in one of those little tiny finger feeders, that's pretty cool. So tag me in that on Instagram because I think that's pretty neat. But what's the most important thing is what goes in that feeder. Next to those bird feeders, those hummingbird feeders, you will also see containers of red dye. Please, for the love of all things, don't buy that. I know it's easy, quasi-cheap, not really compared to what I'm going to tell you you could do, but it is really bad for hummingbirds, okay? Red dye is not good for anybody. That's conclusively linked to like a lot of crap that I'm not going to get into, but you don't want to give it to a hummingbird. It's just not good for them. So very simple, very cheap. Four part regular sugar, four parts regular sugar, the regular old white sugar, and whoops, I screwed that up already. Okay, hold on. I'm not even going to start all over again. Scratch what I just said about that. It is four parts water. Okay, four parts water to one part regular sugar. So let's four cups of uh, four cups of water, one cup of sugar, boil it, cool it, and that's it. Okay, Um, I used to use organic sugar, and apparently there can be like molasses in that or something. So don't use that regular old cheap white sugar. So one more time so we're clear, four parts water, one part sugar, boil it or pretty close to boiling it, and then let it cool. Put it in your uh, bird feeder, in the hummingbird feeder. Do not fill it up all the way, unless you're one of these people on Instagram, which I do not believe that this is true, that you have 20 ruby throat hummingbirds come into your feeder all at once. I've never seen that happen, only in Costa Rica, and it was about 20 different species of hummingbirds. My hummingbirds, my ruby throats, my mom's ruby throat hummingbirds, it is one person at a time. I will tell you that. Otherwise, they dive bomb each other like they take turns. No one's at a big communal gathering. Okay. So uh, I would only put a little bit in there. So whatever size container, like container, meaning whatever size bird feeder that you get, I would only honestly fill it up halfway at the most because otherwise you're going to throw it all away. It's not the cost. It's just the hassle. And then you got to cook the whole thing again. Okay. So I only do mine about a fourth of the way because it is steamy hot in Columbus right now. And you're going to need to change those feeders up probably every few days. I'm not going to lie to you. Last year, I was in a very bad habit. I used to joke, and this actually isn't very funny after I've been further educated on the whole affair, that I would see that the water was bad, like the hummingbird food was bad, the feeder. And I was like, oh, they're just going to get a little punch drunk. Ha ha ha. Well, it ain't funny, actually, because it's they don't get punch drunk. Um, that water, if it's rancid and um, alginated, I may have made that word up, you know, like full of algae and stuff. It, it wasn't that, but it was not healthy sugar water to drink. It can actually make them sick and they, they're tongue can swell up and then they can't swallow anything and they just basically suffocate and die. So that's not funny at all. That's nothing resembling punch drunk. So I feel like a piece of trash that I did that before. So I'm getting very distracted because I'm outside and a very large dragonfly, which I freaking love, is flying by. I knew it was not a good idea for me to do this thing outside. I get far too distracted out here. Anyway, so if we're clear on the bird feeder, uh, use crap sugar, a sugar water solution, change it out regularly, minimum of once a week. Okay, so that's the skinny of it. A minimum of once a week. These steamy hot 99 degree days, it's probably going to have to be a couple of times. And if you don't have time to remake it and you see that the water is bad, this is what I've started doing because I see the water's bad. You know, I make my really bad joke and leave it out. Well, that's what I did last year. But now I see it's bad. I know I don't have time because Who knows what you have going on? You know what I mean? Kids, job, blah, blah, blah. Just take the whole thing in. Do it when you have time, but don't leave it out, if that makes sense, okay? So that's number one. Uh, 
just have a, a hummingbird feeder. But otherwise, if you have the space and you want to put a little bit more time, you can make a yard or a patio or a balcony full of the plants that hummingbirds love, and then they will actually eat that. I mean, that is literally what they should be eating. And I just learned today, this is one of the reasons I actually like doing my blog and my podcast is because I learn things. So I try to look up some facts and information before I do these podcast episodes so that I'm giving accurate information because I'm not an expert on any of this. I'm just a passionate backyard enthusiast, okay? I actually didn't know that hummingbirds eat insects also. So they eat up to, let me read this, a few dozen to a thousand insects a day. I did not know that. So this goes back to another episode I did where as if if you can make your nature space, if you can make your yard as natural as possible, meaning as little pesticide use as possible, because now... The things that you're spraying all over the yard are affecting the insects that actually survive that spraying. And then birds and all kinds of other things are eating those things. So then you're giving them pesticide laden insects and that's not healthy for anything. Okay. So you can kind of see if you listen to enough of my episodes, which I hope you are, you will kind of see how this all affects everything affects something else. So I'm hopefully connecting some dots for you and, um, helping you to make some better choices for your yard and get more enjoyment out of your yard. So on to some plant ideas, whether it's in a pot or in the ground, it doesn't matter. All right. So bee balm, uh, bee balm, you can plant in in a pot. If that's all the space you have, that's totally fine. Bee balm uh, spreads and does really well in the ground, but you could certainly put it in a pot. Okay. Bee balm, salvia, all kinds of salvia and those typically uh, look i'm not an expert on salvia but i believe that the majority of salvia does not survive our winter so it's perfect in a pot zinnias last year i will tell you was the first year i saw our ruby throat hummingbirds go at our zinnia flowers but i love zinnias pots are in the ground that's all that's all the same columbine that's actually a native plant And I'm getting distracted because I see this dragonfly going towards our pond. And a couple of years ago, this was a different episode, they actually laid eggs in the pond. So if this thing does it again, I'm going to lose my mind. And I'm probably going to have to stop the podcast because I'm going to be so distracted. All right. Bee balm, salvia, focus, Kathy. Bee balm, salvia, zinnias, columbine, cardinal flower. That is a a perennial that will come back every year here in Ohio. So that's a great choice for hummingbirds. And that's, I'm going to stop there because, I mean, seriously, I could probably go on and on about that. But, and another thing you could add is a little water bubbler. If you have a bird bath and you want to put a little bubbler in it, they have solar powered uh, bubblers, little fountains and things like that. The hummingbirds will actually fly through there and get some little sips of water. Okay. So we have our natural sugar solution, keeping your yard space as natural as you can so we don't kill off insects, which the hummingbirds need to eat, or we don't poison in them and give them crappy things to eat and a few flowers here and there if you can and you will see yourselves some hummingbirds in your space and a few quick little notes about um, the hummingbirds that I learned today they actually live three to five years and I don't know if you knew this these hummingbirds obviously then don't die off because they live three to five years but they spend their time in their winter our Ohio winters in southern part of Mexico or in Central America that actually breaks my heart to think of and they don't travel in flocks okay it's not a flock of hummingbirds flying to Central America it's one lowly little hummingbird flying there all by itself which makes me really sad I mean they're they're small I can't imagine my little hummingbirds flying from here to Target let alone to Central America so this does, last point I'm going to make is this does um, lead what? This does lead me to remind you that we can all do our part in creating a space for nature because the hummingbird flying from, let's take it a couple states away, um, gosh, Michigan, let's say from Michigan through Ohio down to South America, it needs, or uh, Central America, it needs things to eat on the way down. It needs insects. It needs sources of sugar. And so I can create that in my yard. I can be that kind of a change to at least give the hummingbird a meal for a day. Okay. Do you see what I'm saying? And then just creating those spots for nature. We can all have a little spot 
Everyone has time for that. Everyone has the physical ability, relatively speaking, to put a pot on a balcony or a patio. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, hopefully that gave you some ideas of how you can enjoy a hummingbird in your space. And if you have any questions or comments, drop me a line. And until then, have an amazing day. And thank you for listening. 